Welcome to part two of Let's Play Robot Commando by Steve Jackson. At the end of the last part, I was in paragraph 54. Here we go. Uh, you are at the College of Medicine. This is both the greatest hospital and the greatest medical laboratory of your entire nation. You approach cautiously, but see no sign of the Corosian invaders. You leave your robots near the front steps and enter the building. If you have been here before, turn to 232. If you seek treatment for your own injuries, turn to 77. If you look for information on sleeping sickness, turn to 126. Okay, we are going to seek treatment for our own injuries and turn to 77. You turn your steps... I'll start again. You turn your steps towards the hospital section of the College of Medicine. Soon you find a medikit which you may add to your which you may add to your possessions. What will you do now? Okay, before I read that, I will just add that to my possessions. So I now have six. Okay. Um, continue to search the hospital. Turn to one hundred eighty-five. Look for information on sleeping sickness. Turn to one hundred twenty-six, or leave the hospital, and turn to two hundred ten. Um, we are going to look for information on sleeping sickness and turn to 126. You follow the signs to the medical library, or rather you follow the signs to the medical library. Um, there, amid huge dusty stacks of books, you begin your search. Finally, in an old textbook, you find a clue to help you. It describes a medicine that, so it says, will instantly cure all types of sleeping sickness. If you will try to, if you will try to compound this medication, turn to 104. If you would rather leave the hospital, turn to 210. Okay, we're going to try and compound this medication and turn to 104. Here we, uh, here we are. Um, looking at a hospital map, you see that the research lab is not far away. Carrying the book with you, you set off to find it, and soon arrive at a large chemical laboratory. As you walked, you heard strange squeaks and shuffling noises in the hallway, but saw nothing. You are somewhat disturbed to note that there are no sleeping doctors or researchers here. No one is here at all. You bar the lab doors for safety and set to work. Fortunately, the instructions are clear and the lab is well stocked. Eventually, you have a one litre flask of blue potion. Oh, that's a bit, uh, that's a bit too metric for my liking. Eventually, uh, a litre is roughly... Well, a pint is 568 millilitres. So, roughly two pints is a litre. So, yeah. Anyway, eventually you have a two pint flask of blue potion. Um, all you can make with the, uh, with the materials at hand. Indeed, from the rarity of the materials you used, you doubt that another, uh, that another two pints could be made in the whole of Thalos. But you also know from the book that, uh, that two pints would be enough for everyone in Thalos. Nevertheless, there is a problem. The potion is so volatile that once opened, it will quickly evaporate. You cannot awaken people one at a time. You must find a way to treat your whole nation at once, so your quest is not over. Outside, you hear the strange squeaking once again. If you leave immediately, turn to 394. If you remain in the laboratory, checking your work one last time, turn to 372. And here's the laboratory. Okay, we are going to remain in the laboratory and check our work one last time and turn to 372. You read through the book one last time and discover an alarming footnote. One of the ingredients uh, you used was essence of man trap flour. But according to the footnote, this essence loses its power over time. It may be that the material you used was weak or even totally worthless. The only way to be absolutely certain of success would be either to find some brand new essence or to acquire a fresh man trap flower and add it to your flask or potion. But you have no idea where to look for fresh essence and the flower itself grows only in the deepest jungle. 
Uh, you pack the fragile bottle of blue potion carefully and set out for your robot. Turn to 302. Okay, so we have the blue potion and we need another man trap flower or essence. Okay. Um, so equipment, a uh, new line. Blue potion. And information. We need another man trap flower or essence I'll just say more or no or more essence there we go okay jolly good let's move on um, turn to 302 as you leave the research labs you hear once again the strange shuffling and squeaking you step through a pair of double doors into a room full of large wire cages. You see that some are opened. Then you realise what the sounds were. Now the hospital's experimental animals have escaped and they are hungry. You are facing a trio of red-eyed giant lizards. If you fight the creatures, turn to 328. If you turn to flee, turn to 350. Okay. Um, okay, we are going to turn to flee and turn to 350. Test your luck. If you are lucky, you make it back to your robot without incident. If you are unlucky, you trip and fall on the precious blood. Blask. On the precious flask of blue potion, it is broken and lost. You arrive back at your robot just ahead of the pursuing beasts. Turn to 210. Okay, so we need to test our luck. Our luck is currently um, 10, so we need this dice roll to be 10 or lower, which it was. So, But we have to lose a luck point, so we don't lose our blue potion, which is good because we definitely need that. Anyway, turn to 210. Um, you decide to leave the College of Medicine. You climb back into your trusty robot. Where will you go now? Uh, to the College of War, turn to 277. Uh, to the Thalian Museum, turn to 14. Uh, to the Dinosaur Preserve, turn to 66. Or out of the city, and turn to 380. Okay. We are going to go to the, uh, to the Thalian Museum and turn to 14. You stay in your robot and travel to the huge Thalian Museum. Uh, this is the largest museum in all the land. It is full of exhibits on every imaginable subject. If you have been here before, turn to 160. If you have not been here before, if you have not been before, continue reading. As you approach the museum, you keep a sharp watch, but you see no enemies. When you arrive, you park your robot in front of the building and walk up the steps past a pair of carved stone dragons. Uh, the museum attendant is snoring, but the little information robot is alert. Can I help you? It asks. What will you do? Uh, ask for military information. Turn to 36. Uh, ask for information on sleeping sickness. Turn to 80. Now ask for information on the Corosians, turn to 58, or leave the museum and turn to 102. Now we're going to ask for information on the Corosians and turn to 58. Oh, very good, the little robot responds. We have a wonderful exhibition on Corosian history and culture in Hall Epsilon. If you go to Hall Epsilon to study Corosian history, turn to 124. If you'd rather ask for something more up to date, turn back to 14 and make another choice. Okay, we're going to go to Hall Epsilon and study Corosian history, turn to 124. Uh, you make your way to Hall Epsilon. The trip is a long one and several times you hear odd echoing sounds. Uh, you realise that you are not alone uh, in the building. You press on and find the exhibition on the history on the history of the Corosians. Studying it 
briefly, you see that it has nothing to do with their military abilities. It is all about their culture and customs. It will take an hour to study the material. If you want to do so, turn to 180. If you return to the front desk, turn to 224. Okay, we're going to return to the front desk and turn to 224. You leave the military display and take a shortcut through a hallway overlooking a huge gallery. As you look down, you are surprised to see devastation. A huge area of exhibits has been demolished. Two black-clad Corrosian soldiers are lying there, dead or wounded, and a trail of devastation leads right through a huge hole in the wall. You hear shouts from below. If you would like to go down and investigate, turn to 374. If you would rather avoid the area and head back towards the information desk, return to 14. Okay, we're going to go down and investigate and turn to 374. You find a stairway and head down. You find that both the Corrosians are dead. One was about your size. You quickly strip off his uniform and put it on yourself. It may come in handy later. Okay, so we have a Corrosian uniform. I'll put that in my information, or equipment rather. Um... Okay, here we go. Um, yeah, it may come in handy later. You check the signs. The, uh, the demolished exhibit was labelled Tyrannosaurus. The shouts from outside are coming closer, so you duck out of a convenient door and return to the front desk. Turn to 14. Uh, you stay in your robot and travel to the huge Thalian Museum. Oh yeah, we've read this, haven't we? Okay, um... Yeah, now we're going to leave the museum, 102. Yeah, we've already read that paragraph. If you possess an amulet, turn immediately to 250. Otherwise, you leave the building the way you entered. You re-enter your robot, turn to 396. Okay, do we possess an amulet? Uh, no. So we're going to leave the building the way uh, the way we entered. Um, yeah, yeah, you re enter your robot, turn to 396. Uh, you are leaving the Thalian Museum. Where would you like to go now? The College of War, turn to, turn to 277. The Dinosaur Preserve, turn to 66. Uh, the College of Medicine, turn to 54. Or Out of the City, turn to 380. Okay, we're going to go to the College of War and turn to 277. Now, the College of War is easy to find. It is a huge five-sided building built all of brick. If you have if you have been here before, turn to 332. If you have not been here before, keep reading. A robot of unfamiliar design is standing in front of the building. Uh, you recognise it as a Corrosian military robot. What will you do? Uh, attack immediately, turn to 46. Try to pass as one of the invaders, turn to 87. Or leave before you are noticed. Turn to 147. Okay, we're going to try to pass as one of the invaders and turn to 87. If you are wearing an enemy uniform, turn to 177. If you do not have a uniform, test your luck. If you are lucky, turn to 199. If you are unlucky, turn to 223. Okay, we are wearing an enemy uniform. So I'm turning to 177 immediately. Your trick is successful. The enemy pilot sees your uniform and lets you go without asking for the password. He ignores you as you go past him peacefully. Turn to 65. You park your robot beside the door and enter the College of War. You are alert for other Corrosians, but apparently the sentry outside was the only one. The halls and rooms are littered with beribboned generals fast asleep. Following the signs, you head for the library to see what you can learn. But, just as you get there, you hear a roaring sound from outside. Looking out of the window, you see three sleek fighter planes hurtle down, sprout legs, and turn into robots like the sentry outside. The Corrosians are arriving in force. You quickly look around the room. There are several volumes on the counter, 
as though someone were trying to check them out just before the sleeping sickness hit. Uh, the books are too large to carry and you have time to look at only one. Which title will you choose? Uh, the City of the Guardians, turn to 256. Emergency Procedures, turn to 300. Or, or Corrosion Military Robots, turn to 268. Okay, we're going to choose the City of the Guardians and turn to 256. There's the, uh, the robot that was a fighter plane or something. Anyway, turn to 256. Uh, the book gives you the location of the city of the Guardians, the secret base that is the headquarters of the army of Thalos. Uh, the map reference is 22. Make a note of this number. Substitute it for XX when you are given the option to visit the city of the Guardians. Okay. Okay, so we're going to type out um, City of the Guardians 22XX or whatever. New line. City of the Guardians 22 or XX, comma. There we go. Um, you may find another use for the map reference as well. Uh, for now, of course, you must deal with the corrosions outside the building you are in, in which you are. Turn to 368. Uh, you realise that you must leave quickly. Looking outside, you see that the corrosions have entered the building. The fools have left their robots outside and unguarded, parked near yours. Uh, you spring out of the window and run for them. If you get back into your own robot, turn to 322. If you get into a corrosion robot instead, turn to 345. Okay, we are going to um, take a corrosion robot instead and turn to 345. Laughing, you scramble into an enemy combat robot. The Myrmidon is the standard corrosion combat robot. It has two forms, humanoid and fighter plane. Myrmidon, human form, armor 12, speed, medium, combat bonus plus one. Plane form, armor 10, speed, very fast, combat bonus plus one. Special abilities, the Myrmidon can change shape from humanoid to aircraft and back. The Myrmidon takes one combat turn to change forms. During that turn the robot make, makes its normal combat roll but if it wins it does no damage to the foe it just defends itself. If you're not in combat the robot can change shapes can change shapes freely with no penalty of any kind except that if the robot is in humanoid form humanoid shape rather and has two or fewer armor points it will fall apart if it changes to a plane. The controls are unfamiliar. If you have read the manual on corrosion robots, turn to 322. If not, turn to 3. Okay, so we have a new robot. Um, I'm going to just put my the latest one at the top, really. Um, no, in fact, I've just replaced that because I don't have that one anymore. It's a Myrmidon. So I'll just change that to Myrmidon. So... Um, ar uh, human form armor. I write armor form human. Uh, no, ah, uh, human for armor human form. Okay, what was it? It was twelve. Armor. Uh, what was it? Plain form. I don't like plain, I prefer aeroplane. Aeroplane form. Ten. Okay, speed. Human form. What is it? Uh, medium. Speed, 
aeroplane form uh, very fast uh, combat bonus plus one for both so just say plus one for both um, can change into uh, special abilities can change can change um, shape from human form to aeroplane form um, can only be done if we have two if we have more than three armor points yep, oops. Um, um, only if we have more than two armor points I'll just say we um, it will fall apart if we change from human to aeroplane with two or fewer armor points there we go right okay that's that done Um, the controls are unfamiliar. If you have read the manual on corrosion robots, turn to 3 to 2 If not, turn to 3. Um, we have not read the manual, so we're turning to 3. Because you are not familiar with this type of robot, you do not get the normal combat bonus with it. In fact, your skill is one less than usual while you use it. You realise you had better get out of there while you can. So hundred and forty seven. Okay, so we also um Yeah, so it's actually combat bonus minus one. So yeah. Anyway, um turn to hundred and forty seven. You are leaving the College of War. Well, where will you go? The College of Medicine, turn to 54. The Thalian Museum, turn to 14. The Dinosaur Preserve, turn to 66. Or another city, turn to 380. Um, okay, we are going to go to another city. Um, off we go, 380. You are leaving the city of knowledge, hopefully wiser than when you came. Where will you travel now? The city of industry, turn to 265. The city of the jungle, turn to 137. The city of storms, turn to 179. Or the city of worship, turn to 166. We're going to go to the city of storms and turn to 179. Uh, an hour into your trip, a powerful storm strikes. If your robot is a flying type, turn to, turn to 280. Otherwise, you ride out the storm safely on the ground and then resume your journey. Turn to 144. Okay, our robot is not a flying type because... Um, yeah, because we're in humanoid form. So... Um, yeah, so we have to turn to 280, because we haven't turned to uh, flying form, whatever. Because I think we don't know how to or something. Anyway, 280. Roll one die. If you roll one or two, turn to 122. If you roll three, four, five or six, turn to 144. Okay, so we rolled a 5, and that means we're turning to 144. 
Uh, you are in the city of storms. This beautiful metro uh, metropolis is on the sea coast because of the hyphen there. I thought it was going to say metro something. This beautiful metropolis is on the sea coast and is often the site of spectacular thunderstorms. Where would you like to go? Now, the weather bureau turned to 260, the coast turned to 335, another city turned to 43. Um, we're going to go to the coast and turn to 335. Uh, you pilot your robots along the sea coast. If you are flying, turn to 284. If you are not flying, turn to 8. Okay, we're not flying, so we're turning to 8. The sea coast is a narrow strip of land is a narrow strip of sand, rather, bounded on one side by the ocean and on the other side by steep cliffs. After a few minutes of travel, you see something ahead. It is a huge herd of brontosaurus dinosaurs. Most of them are munching on seaweed thrown up by the storms, but a few are investigating something that glitters. If you investigate it yourself, turn to 84. If you turn around and go back to the city, turn to 144. Okay, we're going to investigate it and turn to 84. Okay, the inquisitive dinosaurs totally surround your quarry. What will you do? Shove your way in among them, turn to 387. Fire a few shots to panic them, turn to 299. Or shout at them over your speakers, turn to 119. Okay, uh, we're going to shove our way in among them. So turn to 387. Now, the placid beasts are quite familiar with robots. They honk and hiss, but move over to let you through. Turn to 62. The dinosaurs were investigating a cowboy robot, possibly belonging to their, their herder, which is half buried in the sand. The machine proves to be unsalvageable, but within its cockpit you find two medikits. You may add these to your possessions and continue. You cannot return to the seashore. Turn to 144. Okay, so we have another two medikits, that's good. So now we're up to eight. And turn to 144. Okay, and here is where I end the video. So thank you very much for watching. Um, I'll just note down I'm on paragraph 144. Yep, 144. And I will see you next time, or rather you will see me next time, or at least watch the video next time if you wish, I don't know. Anyway, thanks again for watching and goodbye.